Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our short training videos. We've been looking over the past few weeks and months at different aspects of leadership. Anything from how to become a better leader, how to become a more effective leader, what are the leadership traits that you need, what are the leadership skills to become a better leader, how do you know what a better leader looks like or sounds like, and how do you benchmark yourself against that. So I've, sh I've sought to be as wide as possible but going into one or two things a little bit more deeply as I will in today's conversation. The topic we're going to talk about today is never lose the war, only the battle. Or put a different way, it's okay to lose the battle, but for whatever reason, don't lose the war. Because you see, leadership, especially when you're challenged both internally or externally, is all about how you develop that leadership skill and style that makes you get to the point, helps you get to the point where you can achieve whatever it is that you wanted as success. My name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience of growing, leading and developing teams across five different markets where I've lived and worked and equally across Europe, Middle East and Africa. Now in these videos, if what I say resonates with you, please feel free to like, comment, and of course share. And uh, by all means subscribe to this channel so you know more about the other videos coming up as and when they're notified. Never lose the war, only the battle. So what are we talking about here? Well, let's start with some very basic things. As a leader, it could well be that you're wanting new staff. You're wanting an increased budget or a new budget. It could be you want funding. It could be that you need approval from the board or the shareholders for a new business plan. Or it could simply be a new strategic direction that you want to take and you're looking for support in that area. Now, inevitably, it could well be that in all of those areas, the answer is no. If the answer is no, what I'm saying is well, that's why it's about winning the war. A no is not necessarily something that's going to close everything down and nothing can be achieved. It may well be that the way you approached it wasn't the right way. It may well be that the information you provided was not as complete or as detailed as was needed. So one of the ways in which you have to look at that is to say, who do I have? who could be my sponsor within the organization. And by sponsor, I mean it's a great idea, but you either want to stress test it, proof test it, make sure it works. And for example, in the terms of staffing, what better way than to have somebody in the HR department who appreciates you, likes you, knows what you do, clearly a senior individual, and you say, look, this is what I see my department or my team becoming. Let me walk you through it. Get that person's buy-in, they'll give you some pushback, critique it, give their insights, and as time goes by, you'll improve it to a point where they feel, yeah, this can be presented to the board. And if that individual, there is an HR role on the board, for example, you can get it past them with some structure and discipline and approach. So the question is, who can support you as a sponsor within an organization, of course? The other thing to think about as well is maybe it's about timing. You see, when you go to the board for a particular decision or your boss, you have to go with an awareness of what the right timing is. Don't go at the end of the year when budgets are being reviewed or the year is being reviewed to see where the company ended up. Don't go at quarter end because that's a time when a lot of work is taking place in order to support the business strategy. And depending on how big the company is, it could be you know, a full review at a corporate or stock exchange level. So these are some of the things that you need to just start thinking about and bearing in mind. But the main thing I would say is, first of all, in order to not lose the war, you have to make sure you're very clear about your strategy. What is the strategy 
that you have put in place to secure, let's say, that business plan or that creation of a new department or bringing in that key member of staff. But the strategy is obviously supported by tactics. Now, we don't have time to go into it here, but you get it very easily. Strategy is about the long term, where you want to end up and what does it end up looking like. The tactics are what you use to support the strategy. So if you imagine very simply, it's some team, football, rugby, basketball, baseball, it doesn't matter. The strategy has to be, how do we win? Because that's the ultimate objective, is to win the game. How do you do that? The forwards, the backs, whoever the key star player is, how do you get the ball to him or her to enable them to develop the game? So there's a strategy that you put in place to block and tackle the other team and make sure that you have no surprises. The tactics, however, are individual. Those are the moments. So it could be, for example, substitution in a game. At what point will so-and-so be substituted? At what point will a particular play be made? You look at those and you say, the big picture is we want to win. You want to win the game. And here's how you want to win. So maybe the two, three, four key areas. And the tactics are a multitude of different areas that you put in place to secure the overall strategy. So as we think about that, you have to come up with a game plan, like anything. This is all part of the overall strategy to win. And the game plan, very simplistically, is you need to prepare. You don't just walk into the boardroom and say, I need to hire three senior executives or three new members of staff, and I need them because they're going to be great in the business. He comes in or she comes in because they've got a great clientele in another company, or I want them because they've generated revenues of whatever outside the company. You've got to have a plan together. You've got to be prepared. So what is the preparation? How does that document look? How impressive should it be, both in terms of numbers, but also in terms of showing them that you've put thought into it? You need to be confident. When you go to present something, you can't just walk up and wonder if you're going to make it and if it's not going to be uh, thrown out. So be confident in terms of how you do that presentation. Recognize that there will be losses. This is the part where you can lose some battles. And if you're strategic enough, you can put some things out there which you know are going to be losses, but you don't mind losing because you've got your eyes set on something else. So give them an out, as it were, if they're approving something for you. Make sure you connect with the decision makers. So who are the decision makers to whom you need to go to get whatever it is you need to have approved? And make sure you target them and focus on them and see how you can connect with them offline or online or maybe equally like HR. Help them to understand what the strategy is that you're putting together. Really important, however, do not share your strategy and do not share your tactics. I've always recommended, and I always do, I play those pretty close to my chest, because you never know who is going to try and uncover, dismantle, take the carpet from under your feet. So keep your strategy and tactics very close to you. Maybe one or two people who you confide in and you know because you've got the same objectives, and then you find a way forward. And of course, even when you lose the battle, you never attack anybody except perhaps intellectually. An attack may be rather strong, but because I've seen it in certain cultures, that's why I use it. In certain cultures, they can be very aggressive. So you can either replace attack with aggression if that's the way you feel. But what I'm saying is challenge them intellectually. Challenge them on the basis of what you've prepared, how that looks, and the result that you want to get out of it. And maybe through that process alone, it will teach them that there's actually something here. There's merit in doing this. I've had challenges myself when I've gone to the various companies I've been at, whether as a managing director or as a head of department, to secure funds, budget, staffing, go in a certain strategic direction. So all that I've said to you today, I've experienced it. This is not theory. This is reality. And what I've found is it's a question of timing. It's a question of knowing your stuff. And to be honest, it's a question of tenacity. Just keep going back 
which is why I never attack at a personal or non-professional level. And even then, attack is too strong, but just be persuasive, be clear, and eventually it'll happen. I can cite situations where it's taken literally months, in one particular case, two years, before I finally got the approval that I wanted for a particular strategy. So you've just got to keep on homing it, improving it, making sure that it gets to a point where it can be accepted. In closing, I would say one really important thing is, especially if you're dealing with, let's say, a client, you're pursuing a new piece of business and the client won't give it to you. Always ask the question, why did I lose that business or that potential business? If they say it's price, then honestly, that's the best gift they could give you. Because in reality, people don't say no on price. They probably say no on value. So you can go back and say, they said price, but maybe my giving to them of value was not positioned where it should be. And you can then work on that and improve on that for the future. The price could still be the same, but they see the value. Either going back to the same client, potentially potential client, or you go to another one, but it gives you food for thought. So price is never an excuse in terms of losing a battle. It gives you ammunition for the war that you want to win. So I hope that the idea of losing the battle and winning the war sits well with you. I hope it resonates because every day is a battle. Every day you can make it as easy or as fun and as challenging because I love the intellectual piece. If I've been told, no, you can't do that or this is not acceptable, I like to come at it a different way. And like I say, if it takes months or years, getting to where I want to be is absolutely critical. So I hope that um, this has resonated with you. If it has, then please feel free to like, comment and share. And of course, subscribe to this channel so you know more about the videos that are coming up and look back and see some of the other ones that I've shared before. In the meantime, thank you.